Well, we are learning more about the Dayton shooting that left nine people dead last weekend. The high-capacity magazine used by the shooter, as well as the body armor he wore, were both purchased for the gunmen by a friend. Investigators have been talking to that friend to see what he knew about the attack, and he is now facing federal charges. Ryan Young has been following the investigation. He joins us now live. Uh, so, Ryan, we have heard now that the friend has admitted to providing the gunman uh, with essentially all the weaponry and the gear to carry out this massacre. Well, uh, partly, and this is the thing that they wanted to make clear. They don't believe he knew that the shooting was going to occur or what Connor Betts was actually planning. What they do know is that apparently, according to him, at least, that he was trying to help the shooter hide this equipment from his parents. Apparently, he lived at home. So you have that drum that so many people have focused on because when you see it, you can't believe someone would have this for AR-15, an ammunition drum that holds over uh, 100 bullets, and then you have the top part of an AR-15 and that body armor. All this put together is what this person, apparently Ethan Colley, 24, had at his house. And in fact, as you listen to investigators talk about this case, this is what they had to say yesterday about what they found inside that apartment. He purchased these items for Betts and stored them at Collie's residence in order to um, assist Betts in hiding the items from Betts' parents. Mr. Collie does not stand accused of intentionally uh, participating in the planning of that shooting. We have no evidence of that. There's no allegation of that. So what, what's interesting about this is none of that is illegal. What actually kind of got him in trouble also on top of all this is the fact that he was using drugs. And when he filled out his federal firearm license, that was a part of it to get some of this stuff that he lied about using drugs. And when federal investigators showed up to his house the day after the shooting, they saw marijuana present. He also was growing mushrooms in his house and said that he had been doing drugs with this shooter for quite some time. So when you put all that together, he faces 15 years possibly in jail. Now, you, you also think about the fact that Connor Betts, the shooter, actually shot and killed his own sister, and another friend was wounded in this shooting. So many questions in this case when you have nine people dead and over 20 people injured in this. And police tell us if he was able to turn that corner and get inside that club, with that ammunition drum, this could have been so much worse, but the Dayton Police Department were able to respond, surround him, and shoot and kill him before he was able to get inside there. But, of course, so many questions now laying this all out. There's one thing I do want to bring up. We learned this yesterday while they were talking at this news conference, that they've finally been able to get into his phone, Connor Betts' phone, and they're going through that. Hopefully, we'll be able to find out some sort of motive sometime soon because, as of right now, there's still no clue about what set him off and turn them loose on that street with all those innocent people taking that gunfire. Yeah, nine people killed in less than 30 seconds. Uh, Ryan Young, good to have you on this story. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well. well, sadly, there is more gun violence to tell you about in the U.S., this time in Southern California. Take a listen. That's a shootout that started after a routine traffic stop on Monday. The driver opened fire on a highway patrol officer after being pulled over. That officer was killed. Then more gunfire was exchanged when backup arrived on the scene. The suspect died during that shootout. Two other officers were wounded. Officials don't know why the driver shot at the police. We're turning to Australia where one person is dead, another wounded after a knife attack in broad daylight. A 21-year-old man has been arrested after a stabbing rampage in Sydney in the CBD. The suspect seen there jumping on a car trying to resist capture by passerbys. <laughs> Police tried to corner the suspect, demanding that he drop the knife, as you can hear there. At one point, he can be heard shouting, shoot me, I want to die. But it was members of the public who finally apprehended uh, that attacker, using chairs, you can see, in a milk crate to pin him down. Police say the suspect has a history of mental illness and is not linked to any terrorist group. 
Well, authorities in Malaysia may have found the body of a missing Irish teenager. 15-year-old Nora Kwa Rin was staying with her parents at a resort in a rainforest when she went missing more than a week ago. Her family says she has disabilities, d developmental disabilities, and never went anywhere by herself. A UK charity that has been helping the family says authorities found a young woman's body near the resort, but it can't yet confirm that it is Nora. Well, still to come here at the International Desk, CNN is exposing a private secret army doing the bidding of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Our Clarissa Ward joins us next with her exclusive report.